pull in the tank test protected by saran wrap stretched tightly around it so it's floating fairly good the uh, looks like right in the middle this is the uh, scale weight of the boat it's un unloaded and the uh, chine right at the uh, where the passenger is going to set is just at the water's edge so I got maybe three inches of hole in the water and then it comes out up here on the bow <laughs> got to zoom in a little bit more here okay you can see on the bow how much is sticking out and we'll come down to the midpoint and you can see where it's just on the chine line and then it comes up out of the stern okay I've got my heaviest person probably about a 280 280 pound person sitting in the boat and let's let me stop and zoom in and um, we'll go along and see what we got for the water line again Okay, here we are again at the heaviest person. And I still got a lot of a lot of freeboard left. And you can see the keel underneath the, the water there. Okay. Let me swing the uh, Pull around on in or the uh, tank. Okay, there we go. That's the stern. So the with the heavy person in the hull, it's right in the V where the two bottom panels meet the two side panels in the stern. So I got maybe three inches in the water. And so there's the, the bow. There's st still a little bit, probably two or three inches on the front seam sticking out. Let's go back around again. Okay, there's with the weight of the, uh, actually probably twice the weight of the electric paddle motor itself and probably twice the weight of a double battery pack or an extended battery pack and I can't tell much of a dis difference other than uh, maybe a little bit uh, not much not much this is going to carry quite a bit of a weight let me go ahead and put another person inside okay that's with the person right here and right here uh, we got a 280 pound person in the front and then about a 250 pound person in the back and so it's sinking deeper in the water the bow is still out by a couple inches on the front seam and the stern is a couple inches under but it's still resting pretty straight from front to back. I was curious as to what would happen if I had my 380 or 280 pound paddler plus another 250 pounds up front and 250 pounds in back and uh, just cargo and the bow seam is right in the water maybe down half an inch and the stern is maybe six inches in the water but I still got quite a bit of free freeboard in there at that I don't know if I'd want to be out in heavy water without a deck version and uh, a small cockpit, but uh, uh, out in protected inland waters, you could probably do quite a bit of camping out of this thing. Well, I've got that done <laughs> in the middle of another Seattle rainstorm. 
So uh, uh, I'm happy it can carry the weight. Uh, I don't know if I would ever want to do two people in this thing. I mean, you could, but uh, mainly designed it for a, a one person with some cargo carrying capacity uh, or some, uh, you know, just some good high sides out of the water. Uh, which can hinder its, uh, you know, lightness. But I'd rather have a little bit of, uh, you know, safety as opposed to, uh, uh, you know, light. Uh, but it's, it, I don't know, probably 50, 60 pounds somewhere around in there. We won't know until I get done, and then it'll depend on how big of decking I'll put in the front because uh, I will have. Uh, um, two hatches or compartments, one in the bow and one in the stern, with fairly large oval hatches. I'm going to get from Chuck the really good kayak ones, uh, so you can be able to stuff things in it. And most of the cockpit will be open. I don't think I'll put the uh, the top on it, uh, but it will have rudder. Uh, be able to either go rudder or with the electric paddle with a rudder mechanism on it. So, and then with uh, uh, adjustable feet. Uh, pedals, ca kayak pedals, to control the rudder. So, uh, so much for the tank testing. So now I know what I have to do, and uh, now I'm going to go order the plywood, and uh, we'll start building this here in a couple weeks. You know, depends on how quickly things go with the price of gas. I'm going to have to save up just to drive to the uh, the wood store. So I'll see you guys later. I've got a little follow up on this on some more of the uh, scarfing uh, bevels versus the uh, finger joints too. So stay. Stay around. But until the next time, bye. Well, we're going to do a little bit extra here besides the tank testing to make it uh, go. Uh, some people were talking about the uh, scarfs as opposed to the braking on the uh, finger joints that I was using. Uh, so I thought, okay, I, I'll make up a test sample of, of a scarf joint. And uh, going back to what I was saying on the thin layers, uh, this is five layer plywood. You can see uh, five distinct colors here. You've got the surface color, which is still this part. Am I still in focus here? And then I got one, two, three, four, and I just barely got the fifth one down here. And then th this little thin spot right here along the edge is where you need the maximum amount of strength. Like I was saying in a beam, it's the surface areas, and they don't really give you much uh, on the thickness of this plywood. I doubt if it's maybe a 64 thick and then the other thing I was talking about was that you know one side is easy to, to maintain but it's really difficult this was the bottom one and the, the the upper one as you're going along with this big plane over a long surface remember this is a if you're doing the full four foot sheet but on the um, electric uh, motorcraft it's only going to be doing two foot wide sheets so it might be a little bit easier so I may now well, see how this works out but uh, I'm going to try the finger joint because the glassed over finger joint is going to be really strong. But I'm going to go ahead now and epoxy these together and um, give a, 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 a destruction test. And I think maybe I'll make up some more samples uh, of the finger joints and do it at the same time uh, just to show you the flexibility. Now the thing that you have to notice in the, the other one on the finger joints the, where it was breaking at was on the edge of the uh, the two by six that I had it clamped down to. So it's all the forces are going to be along that edge there. Earlier when I had that the big panel before I cut it down in strips, I was flexing it. There's a lot of flex over the total surface. So if you decide to use the finger joints, which I think I'm going to on the electric motorcraft, uh, uh, there's a lot of area in there. I'm going to glass them anyway. So I'm not I'm not going to worry about any any kind of uh, breakage in the panels. Now maybe if it was uh, the big wide bottom on say my Flycaster or my uh, uh, Hudson Springs Pram, the, the big flat bottom uh, fly fishing boats, then I might consider using uh, keeping the scarfs for bending along this direction as opposed to this way. So uh, we'll carry on. Let me, we'll come back after I get these epoxy together. Well, I've just been out here taking uh, photos of the uh, PDF model you can download at uh, Duckworks, and I made it nice and yellow, so I'll be able to uh, get those uh, cropped and put in uh, with the, the rest of, of this information pack. But I'm back to doing more of these uh, tests on the um, 
finger joints and stuff, I made another set and this time I backed them with uh, a one side anyway, got around putting some cloth on it. You can see, I mean, you can, you can, well, that part bends. But it's, the plywood's breaking enough along the joint, but then again, the grain on this section is going this way as opposed to this way. So when you're doing these on your boat, uh, the grain is always going to go the long way, so it's going to be a better, uh, better fit. And on this one, I took uh, a glass the other side again too, but this is one of the ones that I broke, and I'll go ahead and do a, a destruction test in a second. And then uh, this one is a uh, the uh, piece that I had that I had put the uh, regular traditional traditional bevel scarf in, scarf scarf and it came out pretty good. You can see it's nice and clear across here, but trying to get this across the four foot sheet is pretty impossible. Normally you're going to get these, these rough edges and stuff coming out here. And then, like I said before, it's got to be the, the bevels on the outside layers have got to overlap in order to form a strong beam under tension. So let me go ahead and reset it at a down angle and we'll go ahead and destructive test some more of these things. Okay, this is the one that was broke along this line here and I re-glassed it. But I'm going to move it back on the clamping here and... Okay, it breaks along the uh, edge of where the plywood was. I'm going to move this out to see what happens here. I'll put the uh, crack right over the edge. And again, it's the plywood at the edge of the fiberglass. I mean this this has been broken where am I at here? This has been broken along in here. So that fiberglass edging is going to add more to this hole than just the uh, well, pretty face. That was amazing. I wouldn't I didn't expect that at all. Okay this is another one. Last side up finger joint. Whole weight on this thing. Ow! Just barked my shin. It did break, but the plywood separated and not the joint. Ow! I got a nice big scar here. I'm bleeding! Okay. And then we'll go ahead and. There's a scarf joint. We'll break the upper side, the good side, because it'll have the most most strength and there it is. That would have been a strong joint if I had put uh, fiberglass on it. But uh, I'm quite impressed. You can see right there where the, uh, the whole thing just blew apart. So glass on both sides and you'll never have a uh, bad joint. Well, I'm going to run into the house and <laughs> get some first aid bit. Uh, get out. But I'm, uh, I'm quite happy. I'm going to go with my finger joints and then glassing both sides. Even if I would have done a scarf joint, uh, I would have glassed both sides. Uh, this was uh, from six ounce, but four ounce would make a, you know, a nice flatter spot. And on this hull, uh, the panels are only going to be, you know, in the center, maybe that wide. And then on the sides, the, on this boat anyway, the panels are only going to be this high. So I'm only, only going to have you know, maybe uh, this much plus another up to about in here on the sides. So, uh, and I like it because I can get these guys really flat. And uh, so that's that for this. And uh, we'll come back when I start building a boat. But let me show you, I've got another little thing that is taking my time. And I picked up a dead a dead scooter from a friend for free but as they say in the real world there's no such thing as free so see you later